In this tutorial, we're going to talk about correctly saving images so that you get correct color information transferring from your Blender files over into Photoshop or other image editors. We're specifically going to talk about the PNG file format, and we're also going to talk about the JPEG 2000 format. So imagine this. You've worked really hard to create a scene, and you've done some final renderings. You've got the colors exactly the way that you want, so we just come over and we save our files in the file format that we want. And you open them up in Photoshop and you notice that something's wonky with your colors. And you're like, what the heck is going on? Why are my colors different from how I see them in Blender versus how I open them in Photoshop? And this all has to do with color management. So let's come over here and take a look at Blender. Blender uses as its default display device an sRGB color profile. It's a very widely used color profile. It's not the most inclusive color profile in terms of the number of colors, but it's generally considered a good general color profile to use. But some professionals like to use color profiles that have a larger range of colors within their profile scheme. So everyone's using a different sort of color space. Blender's using sRGB unless you turn it off. So when you save this image into PNG file format, you would think that you would open that up in Photoshop and it would be exactly the same, but the colors can shift. So let's take a look at what's going on. This is how the file should be, but depending on if I have my color space set to sRGB, it can look desaturated. If it's pro photo, it can be overly saturated. If it's P3, it can look too dark. If it's color match, it can look too washed out. So you see, this is the problem that we can run into. There's a way that you can circumvent this. And this is what you do, is that you come over to your color settings in Photoshop and before you open an image up, you make sure you are in monitor RGB space. Now this may seem counterintuitive because we're supposed to color manage our images, but this is where the problem lies. So as soon as I turn off color management for RGB and I'm simply using the monitor's RGB space, then when I open my PNG file, it will match. But if I had come over here to my color settings and I had my color profile set to, let's say, sRGB, and I come over and I open up my PNG file, it's a little bit washed out. The colors have lost saturation. So what's going on here? Why is this happening? So before we talk about why it's happening, let me talk about the correct procedure for getting your colors into exactly the color space that you want. And I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to reset my color settings back to the default monitor RGB space. So I'm going to come back over, I'm going to reselect my PNG file. Now it's going to open up the way we see it in Blender. So then we're going to come over here and we're going to convert it specifically now to the color space that you want to work in. In this case, I'm going to go to sRGB. Now I'm free and clear to start doing any color work or editing that I want to do. So what the heck is going on? Why would it be that when I'm over here in Blender, we're working in sRGB, but I save my file in PNG format and it comes up incorrectly if I'm using sRGB as my color space in Photoshop. You would kind of think that doesn't make any sense, but it will when I explain what's happening. The PNG file format is calibrated to working with the sRGB color space. It kind of assumes that you're going to be working with colors in an sRGB color space. But the key here is that Blender isn't saving the PNG files with an embedded color profile. But beyond that, even if it was embedding the correct sRGB profile, the way it's doing it is incorrect. And we'll look at this as it relates to the JPEG 2000 format here shortly. So whenever you open a file up in Photoshop and you have a color space set, let's say I'm using color match RGB, it takes those color values and puts them into that color space and they're gonna shift because Photoshop just saw a file that did not have a tagged color profile in the file, and it just took that color data and moved it and displayed it within the color space that you have set, and colors are going to shift.
So let's talk about one of the other file formats that I really like to use, JPEG 2000. JPEG 2000 actually has some advantages over PNG file format. JPEG 2000 allows you to have 16-bit color. That's a big deal, like PNG does. But the JPEG 2000 also allows you to embed a color profile. So when you save a rendering from Blender, and you specify JPEG 2000, you've got both 12 and 16-bit. Just go ahead and use 16-bit. But the benefit here is that you can specify a lossy or a lossless compression scheme. And that's really important. What I found is that if you leave it at the default of 90%, it's saving you disk space. The file compression scheme is really, really good, and you're going to lose next to nothing, but you get smaller files. But the benefit is that it also saves an sRGB color space profile into the JPEG 2000. But there's a catch. Let's talk about that. In order to understand what's going on and how you're going to work with it in Photoshop, to understand where we are with color settings, I'm going to come down to color settings right here and make sure that we are in our monitor RGB display space. So that means when I open up my untagged PNG file, Ironically, it's going to have the correct color when we don't try and shoehorn it through a color management system. But if you come over now and you come down to our color settings and you assign it a profile and you simply say, I want to assign an sRGB profile because that's what I'm going to be working in. Watch what happens as it shifts the colors. It's assigning the profile and it's just moving the numbers into the profile space and it will shift them as opposed to converting them. So that is why we suddenly lost some saturation with our PNG file. So that's some groundwork for understanding what we're about to see with. So I'm gonna come over to the JPEG 2000 file and we're gonna note that it's a much smaller file size. It's 2.2 megabytes versus 19.2 megabytes, which is one of the reasons I like to use it. But when I open it up, I'm going to be presented with this dialog box here that says, hey, do you want to use the embedded profile? Do you want to convert to the working space? Or do you just want to discard that embedded profile? So let's see what happens if I simply use the embedded profile because we're thinking, hey, that's what Blender put in. That's what it's rendered. We've got the color space data. We should be good to go. And you open it up and it's got the washed out look. It doesn't have the vibrancy of the colors that we had over in Blender. They're brighter, they're more saturated, they're what I want over here in Blender until I come back over here and they're not. So what the heck is going on? Well, it turns out what Blender is doing I think is incorrect. Blender is rendering the image. When you save it in JPEG 2000 format, Blender says, yay, we can actually save a color profile with this file format. So it tags the JPEG 2000 file with the sRGB profile, and it's simply tagging it. It's not converting it, and then it's saving it. And when we open up that JPEG 2000 file in, in Photoshop and we use it, it gives us the washed out look. And so what you want to do when you open up a JPEG 2000 file from Blender, is you want to open it up, and you want to discard the color profile It'll have the correct colors, and then you would do the same thing as PNG. You would convert it over to, in this case, sRGB, which is what we're using as an example. And there you've got the correct colors. I know this is confusing, but this is really critical if you have gotten everything tuned perfectly to the way you want in Blender color-wise.